Hey guys, it's Thomas with Chronic 24, and I got good news and I got bad news. The bad news is that Rolex watches are very expensive and hard to get, and they're getting more expensive and harder to get all the time. If you're a casual watch fan, you know this. And if you watched our recent video on Rolex prices that are going through the roof, you know this in detail. Now that's the bad news. The good news is, is that not every reference number is as equally affected. Believe it or not, there are some models that have been overlooked by the market at large, so they are not as unreasonably priced as some others out there. Today, we're gonna to look at a few in particular that are good if you're looking to buy your first Rolex without spending a bunch of money, buy another Rolex without spending a bunch of money, or if you're more investment-minded, you wanna buy low, sell high, these are all fitting those qualifications. Now, as you might have heard, Chrono24 is doing a $10,000 giveaway towards your next purchase of your next watch. If you want to find out how to enter to win, check out the details in the description below. Now, before we dive into our specific recommendations today, let's talk a little bit about how we got here in the first place. And it's a simple case study in supply and demand. Rolex is everybody's favorite brand, and because they are everyone's favorite brand, there's a lot of competition for the watches on the market. Now, Rolex being Rolex, they don't really care to have their supply match this high and growing demand. So for every one watch that comes out of the factory, there are many more people who want to buy it. That means Rolex boutiques, the authorized dealers, often have empty shelves. And it means that prices on the secondary market, like Chrono24, are much higher than they would be in those boutiques. Now, there are some who say this is a manufactured scarcity that's all intentional. Some say it's just coincidental. That's a separate topic for a separate video. But the case is, that's where we are today. If you want to buy Rolex, chances are, unless you have some in on the wait list, you're going to have to pay a little bit above retail or a lot above retail. The ones we're looking at today aren't too, too bad compared to where they started to where they are now. Now, one general theme that you'll see running through all five of these recommendations is to look where other people aren't looking. A lot of people want the latest and greatest from Rolex. A lot of people want vintage stuff that's kind of built a following over time. A lot of what we see in this list today are neo vintage models, previous generations, recently discontinued ones that people are kind of forgotten about, or they would opt for something newer or something older. And with that, the less competition you have, the better pricing you're gonna get. Now, because Rolex is probably the most popular watch brand out there, even though these watches are temporarily, relatively somewhat overlooked, chances are they're gonna go up in value over time. So if you're thinking about getting one and wanna get a deal now, this is a good place to look. Or if you do wanna invest, these are good options because they're probably gonna go up in time. All right, now let's get down into the nitty gritty and talk about five specific references for our list today. The first watch we'll look at today is the Rolex Submariner 114060. Now this is a 40 millimeter case size, no date that was recently discontinued in 2020. Now the 114060 features the chunkier, substantial super case design. So you get a nice hefty feel on the wrist. It also of course does not have a date window. Many people feel that this aligns closely with the original spirit of the Rolex Submariner. After all, why do you need to know the date when you're down underwater? That said, for everyday wear, date function is handy. So with that, a lot of people eschew the no date version and that keeps prices a little bit lower. And now in late 2020, 2021, Rolex came out with a new version of the Submariner. The no date reference is going to be 124060. It's got slightly different case proportions, slightly different case size, going from 40 to 41. And the movement has been upgraded a little bit as well. With this, they changed the reference number. And so now the older model is officially the 114060. So let's talk about pricing comparisons. If you definitely want the latest model, Submariner, the 124060, starting prices for those on Chrono24 are gonna be about 13,500 and up, depending on condition, year, whether or not it has bots and papers. But if you want a Submariner and you're not too particular about having the latest and greatest model, go for the 114060. Prices for those are gonna start around $11,000. So you still get a Submariner, you still get a Rolex, you still get a dive watch with a lot of great history to it and save yourself a couple thousand in the process. Watch number two on our list is the cousin of the Rolex Submariner. It's the Rolex Sea Dweller. And today we're looking at the reference 16600 or 16600. 
Now, because this is a sea dweller and not a submariner, you have a lot of people who overlook this model. And because it is the older reference, you have even more people who ignore this in favor of something else. This is really good news price-wise. Again, look for the middle child of the bunch. If you want something new, that's fine. You're gonna pay a little bit more. If you want something vintage, that's fine. You may pay a little bit more for that as well. The sweet spot is going to be in things that are forgotten, whether recently forgotten or always been kind of at the bottom of the list. Now, spec-wise, this is a 40 millimeter sea dweller without the Cyclops of the date. In 2017, Rolex released the 126600, which is the 50th anniversary of the model. They upped the case size from 40 to 43, added the Cyclops, and they added a touch of red on the dial. All these factors made it a collector favorite. That, of course, drove prices up. But as more collectors turn to the 50th anniversary, the Red Sea Dweller, a lot of people neglected the 16600, which is why we're looking at it today. Now, I personally think the Rolex Sea Dweller 16600 does not get the credit it deserves because at 40 millimeters, it's a really good size for a lot of risks. 43 millimeters in the new one is quite large. And I'm also never been a huge fan of the Cyclops of the day window. It's hit or miss depending on who you are. But without it, I think it's a really nice, compelling watch that doesn't get a lot of attention, which for today's purposes are very good. Now, price-wise, if you go for the new model, the anniversary model, the 126600, you're gonna pay roughly starting prices of $15,000 on Chrono 24. But if you go for the one we're talking about today, the 1600, 40 millimeters, no Cyclops, you pay around 10, a little less, a little more, depending on what you're looking for. Again, it's a, still a nice Rolex dive watch, still really good quality, but about a 50% price difference between these two models. Watch number three, let's switch it up a little bit. Let's talk about the Rolex Milgauss 116 400 GB. We're talking about the black dial version specifically. Now, if you're a fan of the channel, you might've seen the Rolex Milgauss specific video that we did a few months back about how it is one of the more overlooked Rolex is in the catalog, and today we're gonna to talk about how it might be a little bit underpriced as well. Now, when people are shopping for a Rolex, they probably don't think of the Rolex, at least not in their first choice, their top three, or even their top five. Again, that is good news. If you happen to like what other people don't like, it's great price-wise, and you get something that people don't see a whole lot. Now, the most popular version of this watch, the 116400 GV, is going to be the blue dial, but today we're gonna to talk about the black dial version. It's actually the one that I prefer a little bit more because I think there's already enough going on with the watch visually. I mean, you have a green Sapphire Christian, you have a orange lightning bolt second hand. Do you need a colored dial as well? Now, I actually prefer the black dial to the blue dial. The blue dial is more popular, but with the black, I think you get more versatility. And I think there's less competition design wants. Now, what do I mean by this? I mean that you already have a orange lightning bolt second hand, you already have orange accents on the dial, you already have a highly polished case, and you already had the signature green sapphire crystal. Adding a blue dial to the mitts makes it feel a little bit busy, so I prefer to go black, get a little bit more versatility, dress up, dress down, and you get a better price as well. Now, of course, this anti-magnetism is not super necessary to most people's everyday lives. It's also not even the best at being anti-magnetic by today's standards. And as far as tool watches from Rolex goes, you can probably get some more badass ones than you would with the Meldaus. That said, you get a lot of really cool design features with the Meldaus that set it apart from other watches. Just look at the dial, just look at the hands, just look at the crystal. Now, compared to other Rolex watches that are selling on Chrono 24 for 20,000, 30,000, 40,000, 80,000, the Rolex Milgauss is much more moderately priced. If you want to go with the most popular blue dial version, you're going to pay starting around 12,000. But if you go for my favorite and the one we're talking about today, the black dial version, you're going to stick closer to 10,000, which in Rolex terms is quite reasonable. Next up, we're going to look at the tried and true Rolex Oyster Perpetual. We're going to focus specifically on the now discontinued 114, 300, and a 39 millimeter case size. Now, if you're a fan of watches and you like looking at watches on social media or just keeping up with the news of new releases, you probably saw the latest batch of Rolex Oyster Perpetuals that they came out with 
featuring a lot of really cool, very bold colored dials, something we don't typically see a lot from this brand. Examples include a turquoise blue, my personal favorite, the yellow. There's kind of a coral red and even a candy pink. These got a lot of attention online and from collectors. And with that, prices go up, up, up. Today, we're looking at the previous generation of the Oyster Perpetual in 39 millimeters and with typically more subdued dial colors. So if you're like, I don't really know if I can pull off turquoise or candy pink, this is what you should go for. And even though these ones are not as bright and as bold as the latest generation, you still do get a lot of variation in here. So there's some nice blues with some little green at some marts. There's the classic black, of course, and there's even a purple one, officially known as the Rolex Brave. Now the 114 300 Oyster Perpetuals come in a 39 millimeter case size, which as we've seen with Tudor's Black Bay 58, is really a popular size for a lot of people, whether you have a big wrist or a small wrist, 39 is probably gonna look pretty good on you. Overall, the 14 300 is great. If you like a time only Rolex watch that flies under the radar, you still get the build quality that the brand is known for, but you don't want something super attention getting, something that might attract the wrong attention to your wrist. This is a really good watch and price-wise, you, you can find them below 10K they're definitely the least expensive watches that we're gonna look at today and some of the least expensive Rolex watches on the market. But as with everything on this list, yesterday's price is not necessarily today's price and it's certainly not tomorrow's price. So even though these are in the more approachable end of the Rolex spectrum, they're still going up. If you look at price charts from 2024, you'll see that they're still going up, especially you know even in the last quarter of 2021. So they're good deals for now. Probably gonna go up more. If you want one, I would recommend getting one sooner than later. Watch number five on our list today is a Rolex GMT. It's the 116710LN. Now, when you think of GMTs, your mind probably goes to the Pepsi, the Batman, even the root beer. You probably don't think of the LN version. It doesn't have a nickname, and that's probably why it's so cheap. This, of course, is the fully black bezel version with the green GMT hand. And it's definitely one of the more stealthy options if you're looking for a Rolex GMT. Now this of course has the same proportions, the same movement, the same build quality as other 116, 710 in different color schemes. But with this one, because it is not the fan favorite that the others are due to these bezel colors, you end up getting a better deal. Anyone who's followed the GMT market for a while has noticed that Pepsi's and Batman's in particular have really gone up in price over recent years. The LN version, meaning Lunette Noir, meaning black bezel, is now discontinued. It ran from 2007 to 2018. This means that it has kind of faded in a lot of people's memory, but because it's discontinued, they're not making any more. So price-wise, it's a good deal now. It will probably go up in the future. If you were to buy one now on Chrono 24, prices are starting at around $13,500 which is not a small amount of money, but it's a lot less than you would pay for a Pepsi or a Batman or even a root beer. Now, a couple of quick facts about why we like this watch. It was the first Rolex GMT to feature a ceramic bezel, and it was also the only Rolex GMT ever to have the green GMT hand. I think this, with the low prices now, means that it's gonna go up in value over time when people look back and say, oh, that's actually kind of cool. Now, of your GMT options here, I think the Pepsi is always going to be king. That's not going to change anytime soon or ever. We'll see how the Batman and Batgirl perform over time. The root beer is always going to be a little bit more niche. And I think the LN version, the Lunette Noir, the all black version, I think is a sleeper hit. Now, why do I say this? It's got that beautiful black ceramic bezel, and it's the only GMT to feature a green GMT hand. So while certain models will see their continued success without interruption, I think this one right now is a little bit overlooked, but in time people look back and say, oh, I actually kind of like the black and the green combo. And with that, prices will go up. So there we go. There's a quick look at five investment worthy Rolex watches. They're not insanely expensive now, but they may be more expensive in the future. If you like our videos, be sure to like and subscribe, throw a comment below, be nice or not, anything helps. We'll have more videos coming to our channel all the time, so stay tuned. I'm Thomas, thanks for watching. In the meantime, enjoy your watches.